Welcome to the Prime People Podcast. Today, I have the number one commercial broker on TikTok, over a million followers featured on CoStar. I met her through the Surhand organization. Aviva, welcome to the Prime People Podcast. Thank you, Justin. I really appreciate you reaching out and having me. Well, I definitely appreciate you being here. And I also definitely appreciate you making extra time for us because we got to chop it up for about 20 minutes before there was a recording issue, but it's going to be an even better episode because I have a depth of knowledge into a little bit of your background. You blew up on TikTok. You're killing it in the industrial warehousing game. You're a very dynamic person that does many different things, but let's do the TikTok story first because I know a lot of my viewers want to know, how do I get to a million followers? Can you break down tactically how you actually got started on TikTok and, and how you got to a million followers. Sure. I want to preface this by saying uh, what I'm about to tell you as a strategy still works on TikTok to this day and then can be directly applicable to growing on any other social media platform at the right time. So uh, you can do it too if you actually like what you're talking about. Anyway, in March of 2020, when the world shut down, I had been hearing rumblings of a new social media platform. And by that, I mean, everybody was telling me that I needed to get on TikTok. And so um, understanding how the, uh, how the history of social media platforms has played out, right? MySpace rose, yep. then Facebook came, MySpace fell. Then Instagram came, uh, Instagram rose, Facebook fell. Well, the natural progression is Instagram's on its way out. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. No, you're so, fine. Uh, there's rumbling of TikTok. I, I, uh, the world shuts down because of COVID. And I start to test. Uh, I start to learn the TikTok algorithm by going to YouTube and Googling, this is this is what gets applicable to any other social media platform. You just go to YouTube and you Google TikTok algorithm September 2022. And you're going to find a bunch of videos for free about ex And they're going to tell you exactly what you need to do um, to grow on said platform. Now, you have to understand if you want to do this strategy, you have to be aware what platforms are helping you with the algorithm right for so for example in september 2022 you could still go viral on TikTok, um but and grow but it'd be sure. way harder to grow on instagram with photos right now yeah or pretty much grow on instagram in general so you have to give a just and and the way that you figure out what social media platform is coming into play is just googling that too so uh, YouTube university graduate over here, uh, taught, started learning the algorithm posting about my precious one eyed cat. And that was in March of 2020 when the phone stopped ringing, um, in commercial real estate in March of 2020, every deal fell through when the world shut down. Okay. Maybe not every, but most of them, I mean, all the AAA retail tenants and, and the people we were dealing with, the corporates walked away. We kept, we actually renegotiated the majority of our deals with other tenants that were like medium small businesses just saying, hey, we're in a good position to renegotiate. Let's do that, right? That's what we saw. It was brutal. I have a friend whose family owns a insane office building and it was supposed to close in March of 2020 and the deal fell through. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So context in commercial real estate, our phone stopped ringing unless it was for property management, which was at that point, just trying to collect rent to be entirely honest or help people or sure. it was a disaster and I was bored. And so I started a TikTok page for my cat and I'm testing, I'm learning the algorithm, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, seeing what features work or why they work. And then uh, one of my good friends called and he said, why in the world are you doing pictures of your cat? You need to be making video about videos about what you do for a living. There's no competition in the commercial real estate space. You have a lot of competition with the cat. And I looked at my cat and I said, sorry, dude, it's over for you. <laughs> Just Poor guy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
You're fired. As You're fired, Harry. Too too many cat videos on the internet. I think we all know that. <laughs> okay, watch it. He's listening. No, I'm kidding, Harry. He's like he's just sitting there with his phone right now. He's like, I'll show you. It's September 22. He's looking up the algorithm right now as we speak. <laughs> so, um, anyway, start. I kind of realized there wasn't a lot about commercial real estate on TikTok. There were there were like a few other guys on there and you know sometimes talking about commercial real estate can be very dry mm -hmm. and so i i found ways to deliver the information in a way that were less dry and people like i i learned that there were a lot of people on the internet who want to learn about commercial real estate because it's an extremely gate kept industry but it's changing and we're going to talk about that later in this part. It is actually. Yeah. Actually in our previous non-recording, I kind of mm -hmm. went off on a tangent about commercial real estate. So maybe good. We didn't record that. Uh, but you know, what I think is very interesting is you go on YouTube, you start learning about the algorithm. Did it take a level of discipline for you to keep up a cadence of testing? Like how did you start doing something you didn't do before? Cause I think a lot of people will do it once and then they won't do it for a week or two and be like, ah, it doesn't work. Okay, sure. Well, let me tell you a little secret about social media. It is a long play, yeah. but so is commercial real estate. Yeah. So, so I've got these two, uh, I for, personally, I've got these two things I'm really devoted to commercial real estate and then marketing commercial real estate. And I, I, I suppose what I'm saying is I know a lot of people will post once, twice, three times, nothing happens and walk away. Yep. And like for context, I was at the beginning of like my TikTok career, it was like four to eight times a day. Wow. And a lot of it is, is testing, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. I, um, I noticed that TikTok is like extremely not landlord friendly. And when I would post a pro landlord TikTok, I would get ripped to shreds. So I realized that I needed to talk to the audience and I would be, people would essentially retain my information uh, with more open arms. So your messaging too, because we were talking about this earlier, how you'll even talk to the people about residential real estate in context to, you know, there's a lot of similar concepts that apply in residential real estate, apply in industrial warehousing, right? Which is your niche. And I think we'll get into that in a couple of minutes. And I think people just, they're so scared about commercial real estate. It seems so complicated when in reality, it's a lot simpler than some of the, the residential real estate investment vehicles. Yeah. Uh, Here's a secret. It's way easier to invest in commercial real estate than it is in residential, unless you want to be dealing with tenants all the time. If you want to be dealing with tenants all the time, you should definitely go into residential real estate and they'll call you on Sunday nights. They'll call you all the time. <laughs> what, what's a triple net lease mean? Do you educate the non-commercial realtors that are watching this right now? Sure. So a triple net lease is a lease that essentially says the tenant pays the rent and then they pay the expenses that are, uh, okay. You pay your rent, you pay your expenses. Triple nets are property taxes, insurance, and property management generally. So you have your rent, your triple net expenses, and then your utilities you pay over and above that. Now in the triple net lease, this is what we're, this structure of a lease that we're referring to the wording of the triple net lease says that everything inside the unit is the responsibility of the tenant if it breaks so you have one multifamily complex with four units okay one apartment building four units one warehouse with four units in your multifamily building with four units, you have four disposals, four refrigerators, four dishwashers. You got laundry. Toilets, everything. Toilets. Well, you have toilets in, in warehouses. But so, yeah. when any of those systems break, you're getting a call. The landlord's getting a call or property manager's getting a call. 
and then paying for it. Now in a warehouse, you don't have any of those four disposals, four dishwashers. You don't have anything in a warehouse. It's four walls, an HVAC unit, a garage door, a roof and a parking lot. That's literally what it is. Now in a triple net lease, the tenant is then responsible. If there's a leaky toilet, they are responsible to fix it and pay for it. Now there's different iterations of this lease. However, it's a really big thing in commercial real estate and everybody's talking about it. Well, I, I enjoy the breakdown. And the reason I asked you that question was within that ex explanation, if we were going to step back into the, the TikTok content creation piece, you probably have 15 pieces of content that you just broke down, right? About all of the different stages of a triple net lease. And, and you know, you took a, a dry subject, you made it interesting to people that are in the investing space. How do you compartmentalize that? Like, how were you actually coming up with ideas? Were you writing them down on a list and blasting through them? Or was it just on a whim? Man, a lot of it's just um, what I'm like, what I'm experiencing in real time and then how I can keep the confidentiality of my clients yeah. and tenants and, but still provide a value based on what I'm learning in real time, whether I'm, you know, getting kicked in the head on a deal because I put my foot in, I said something I shouldn't have said or yeah. messed up a number. Um, so I, I'm an on the win kind of creator. I should be a little more regimented mm. and I'm getting there. I don't think you should quite, quite the opposite. Actually, um, a good friend of mine, I was discussing this with her yesterday morning, actually, Glenda Baker, you probably know her from TikTok as well. Um, and we were talking about the, the, the gamification of social media, right? You mentioned Instagram earlier. It is a very fake platform. A lot of people, I mean, you can see it. Like if you're watching right now and you see an Instagram account has 50,000 followers and you go on the comments and you're like, Oh, look at the engagement, 150 comments, go to their last four posts. You're going to see the same nine accounts that they're paying to just repost comments on their, on their account. That's the reality of what that, that platform has become. Hopefully they figure it out and find a way to clean it up. I know guys like Peter McKinnon are screaming from the rooftops, like go back to being a creative outlet. You're not TikTok. TikTok, you, Glenda, the people that I actually follow, they're very transparently human. They're very transparently themselves versus the people that I see on TikTok that are almost, you know, cartoonifying themselves into these extreme non-humans that they're trying to gamify and trigger people into engaging with the algorithm to build their audience. I don't think that's sustainable. I think what you're doing is sustainable to a much bigger degree. Yeah. No, you're right. I, I, and that goes back to what you were saying about frequency and posting. Like yeah. if you are not talking about something you don't like, there's just no way that you can do this long term. And, and to relate it back to myself, I could never have done this with the cat the entire time. Like I just feel super, super lucky that my friend told me to do that at the right time. It made sense. And I love what I talk about. Um, and, and it, you don't have to love finance or you don't have to love business. And, and if you love something niche, uh, there's, uh, there probably somebody else loves whatever you love. That's niche too on the internet if you can talk about that at infinitum. I know a guy, programmer, musician, and he started a TikTok channel for creating miniatures. Like he just likes painting little figurines and it blew up because he's just really super passionate about it. You should see the stuff this guy's creating and it's fly fishing. It doesn't matter what it is. I think we do live in a world where it's cool that these multi-billion dollar companies are putting these platforms in place that you can just tap into if you're thoughtful about what you're putting out there in your niche, right? Like you're not a scattergun. You're very focused with your niche. Um, and we, I want to touch on this. Like, how did you discover your niche and how important do you think it is to kind of stay within that lane or, or that, that river of information to catch the right people? Sure. Well, there's a, there's a thing in sales that directly applies to, in my opinion, social media called the 80, 20 rule. And the 80 20 rule is that you should be providing a value 80% of the time and then selling 20% of the time. Mm -hmm. And by providing a value 80% of the time, 
and selling 20% of the time people get to know you like, like everybody knows that person on the internet that all they do is post when they closed something and like nobody cares about nobody that cares. content. Like people would rather see you a picture of you and your one eyed cat instead of just closed every single post. It's boring, right? People want to get to know you. They want to know your personality. So the 80, 20 rule in sales, in my opinion, I apply that to my social media strategy, which is, it's kind of funny. I do 80% commercial real estate, 20% me. Yeah. Who I am behind the scenes, but I'm, uh, not loyal to that number, but that's what I, how I try to get it so I can talk about my niche 80% of the time and then show my personality another 20%. And, and I like that you explained it like that. And tell me if I'm wrong, but I do feel like a lot of people, they're looking for this perfect blueprint. Give me the secret. Give me the easy button. You know, give me your Asana planning document. And I'm like, I don't think it works like that. Most of the people that I know that did it, they built the muscle and it's almost like an, an intuitive thing that you can you feel when you're floating between that 80 20 and like is that how you monitor or are you very systems driven and you actually have it all planned out oh no i don't have it planned out yeah. i just try to stay somewhat aware of what i'm posting and like where the most eyes are like right now i'm like heavily testing youtube shorts yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say I have a devoted following on YouTube. Yeah, I have like, I mean, I've grown in the last two weeks because I've been posting like a maniac because I heard that that algorithm was popping. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't have like, I have 700 subscribers. So I'm assuming that my subscribers are not like coming across a ton of my content because there are very few people who well, there, there, it's interesting. There's two, like, it's almost like the creators I know on YouTube that are doing it big, almost want YouTube to separate the two channels. Cause the viewers that watch the shorts, aren't the viewers that watch their main channel. I'm going to send you a book. Um, have you, do yeah. you read YouTube secrets by Dara leaves? No, I'm going to gift it to you. Would you like an audio book or a paperback? Audio. I'm going to send it to you when we're done this. <laughs> so you like the algorithm. He, he really does explain the methodology behind it. And wow. what you did in TikTok, you're going to do in YouTube if you're consistent, for sure, because it's fascinating to see. I actually think TikTok is the closest thing to the YouTube algorithm where it's working when you're not, where Instagram and Facebook requires you to actively post, right? Where I get TikTok, you have to actively post, but like, do a lot of your old TikTok still produce tons of views and, and content? Oh, yeah. I was, um, I was getting married and not po I was posting less. And that was when I really realized the algorithm was still pushing out a ton of contents and uh, consistently that I had been making for the last year and a half. So I muted myself to make sure I pulled up the book to send it to you. I referenced the wrong book. Well, a book I referenced was YouTube Secrets by Benji Travis, Sean Cannell. Benji's been on this podcast. Awesome dudes. Um, YouTube formula is Dare Leaves book. So I'm going to send you the YouTube formula and then I'm going to send you some videos from Benji and Sean because I think you're going to have a lot of fun with that too. Deal. Okay. Commercial real <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Thank you. No problem. My pleasure. Um, the commercial real estate industry. So we're talking to a lot of brokers, business owners, people that are in the industry. Again, agents that maybe they, they're not finding their footing in, in residential real estate. I would love to walk them down the path of commercial real estate that they're scared. The industry seems so closed. What are your thoughts on the industry and the future of the commercial real estate industry? Sure. So I feel like commercial real estate is one of the last frontiers that has like not adopted modern technology. And so I have seen it as a massive advantage in uh, my business. And what I want to stress is that there's so much opportunity still like it's unbelievable how resistant the commercial real estate industry is towards this uh social media mm -hmm. branding and it's nothing but opportunity for anybody who wants to put in the work now the question is is how do i get a job in commercial real estate 
And the answer to that question, it's that wasn't your question, but I get this question a lot. No, no, it's, it's the right question. I figured I'd just say it first to get your license. Don't try to do it without your license. Once you have your license, you go to Google. Well, first you contact anybody you know in the industry and you take them to coffee and you pay for it or to lunch and pay for it. Then try to get them to connect you with someone. If they can, just try to get any connection to a firm or a managing broker. If that doesn't work, that's fine. You're going to go to Google. You're going to type in commercial real estate brokerage and you're going to find all the commercial real estate brokerages that come on up on the first and second page of Google. You're going to write them down. Then you're going to find out who the managing broker is, what their phone number is. Then you're going to call them every managing broker and you're going to at, you are not going to email them. You're going to call them and you're going to ask them to meet with you. And if you do not want to call them, if we don't want to get past that step, you're going to have a very difficult time in this industry. You mm -hmm. have to be very, very comfortable picking up the phone. Just saying. And, and, and talking is actually, in my opinion, can be more fun than, and easier than texting, mm -hmm. but yeah. Even, there's a but there's a good there's a place for all forms of communication anyway. Uh, you call the managing brokers, ask them to meet with you. Whoever agrees to meet with you, that's your interview. Now you're going into a job interview, and you're going to have to convince. The first question I got asked at every single commercial real estate interview I had was, "Do you have sales experience, or do you have real estate experience?" Well, if you're a if you're a residential broker you have experience and the industries are not that different. I mean, they are, but transacting the steps of transacting property isn't that different between residential and commercial. So you, they're going to ask you if you have sales experience or real estate experience, and then you're going to tell them how hard you're going to work sourcing your own leads because they are going to expect you to source leads and you can and will. Um, and that's how you get a job in commercial real estate. I like it. And it's true. Like if you're residential or commercial, it's lead generation to qualification conversations, to showing, to contract, to, to closing, to make sure the <laughs> building doesn't blow up before closing. So very straightforward. Um, you know, now how do you merge the two? You're working on creating a social media platform. You're coming into an archaic industry and you're looking to revolutionize it. How, what is your future of what, the potential is because you almost have like an ed tech platform combined with a brokerage, right? So how are you merging those two worlds? That's a good question. I am trying to figure out the answer to that as well. I, um, like I was explaining earlier, I feel like commercial real estate is a long game and I feel like, like the exploration of the power that the internet has had on commercial real estate. I feel like we've hit probably like 2% of like realizing the power of the commercial of commercial real estate on the internet. And so my plan is to just test everything, doing everything in the industry um, and just continue to see what I like, what I don't like. You know, I've, I've noticed I like education. I didn't know that before I started talking to people on the internet about commercial real estate. So it's, it's, um, there's, like I said, there's just so much opportunity. Yeah. I've got a brokerage. I have a membership, which is like a course with live calls that I just dropped and just funds in the work. And meanwhile, brokering all day, trying to lease and sell things. So just, it's, it's just testing and seeing what you like and what works. And that's my plan. I, I like it. You're kind of gamifying your life, right? I think that you're integrating things that you have a passion for. When you say live calls, are these like cold calls or, or calls with tenants that you are have recordings of? No, no, no. So this is like a Zoom call, like yeah. a group Zoom. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Yeah, with like uh, guests and uh, live deal analysis and a lot of just fun, different ways to interact and like quite literally my goal is to like have a network where people can make deals like a, literally like a social network for commercial real estate where it could be like i'm searching for this and somebody could be like i want to sell that and 
they can talk like a Facebook. That would be, I don't know, that'd be cool. Do deals on the internet. I said to you before we were recording, like I'm, I'm going to be at a big investment seminar with people that are, are interested in this type of stuff. And it's fascinating because, you know, the network that's ran by these two partners I've been working with for years, they have an interest in the States. Like we do live in a global village where there's no reason why somebody that's watching this podcast that wants to connect with you can't use me as a conduit, right? It's, it's half of why I do these conversations is I'm just a people connector. I think that's my, my role. I don't really know. I'm trying to figure it out as I go, but I love talking to people. Um, and I do think you're going to find that organically just by doing the thing. Second thing I want to point out that I'm noticing as you're talking, the thirst for knowledge and learning, that piece yeah. is, you know, you put yourself in a position where you're going to continue doing it. So you're organically going to get better because you're searching for knowledge to share with your network, your community, which will lead to work. I want to touch on that. You know, does your TikTok actually lead to real deals and phone calls or does it translate to real life business? Because some people watching this may think, oh, it's for, it's for, you know, dancing cats and kids, <laughs> right? First off, don't say anything bad about dancing cats. I like dancing cats. Henry, it's Harry, right? Henry, but Henry, it's sorry, Henry. <laughs> um, do I do, okay. Do I do deals from TikTok? Here's the thing. Uh, I was taught in my very early stages of learning real estate. They tell you that you need to become the mayor of your town, which in 1990 meant that your face was on a bus stop or a fancy billboard. And at the grocery store, your name, your face was on the thing that, and whoever posted the most and knocked on the most doors and had the most bus stops was the mayor of the town of the agent. And they crushed it in that whatever area. Uh, so I thought about, okay, how do I become the mayor of warehouses? This like, demographically like i couldn't be less demographic in this in like demographically placed in this industry how do i become the mayor of the warehouses in colorado just okay well social media is free and everybody's doing it like look at i my, my obsession is with like human behavior what do i do if i okay so i realized i'm recently i want to go to cancun i go to tiktok i type in Cancun and I see the coolest whatever the coolest stuff is on TikTok and I'm thinking to myself okay that behavior everybody if I'm doing that everybody else is doing that yeah it's true and and so obsessing with then where do I place myself to be in that line of fire to be the mayor of the town and that's um on the internet like the best examples when Gary Vaynerchuk was like there's no point to having a billboard because everybody in the car even the driver are on their phone. <laughs> I always say the only people look at billboards are agents thinking that that's going to be the solution to their business and other <laughs> agents that are like, look at my billboard, right? That's pretty much it. But yeah. So uh, understanding that, okay, I could become the warehouse mayor in Denver because TikTok and Instagram are geo local, which mm -hmm. means when you put out content, it uh, starts closer to you and then spreads out. Okay. I could become the mayor of warehouses in Denver. Turns out, um, that nobody else wanted to be the mayor of warehouses in Denver. So I have no competition and that's how it like, and that's how it's transpired. Do I get deals from TikTok? I have done deals from TikTok, but my best story is the first one I ever got. My best friend here in Denver is a residential real estate broker. And so we do a lot of referrals and I was sitting, I had a client late for a showing. I, it was like nighttime and I just go live on TikTok, and I was not live for more than 10 minutes. And somebody came on the live and asked me, um, for a referral for a Denver residential broker. Nice. I told her to DM me on Instagram. She DM'd me, sent the deal to my friend Leah. Leah closed it, and I got twenty five percent. So that so it was like ridiculous to be like, oh my god. Yeah. So and that's just the referrals. So it's um, it, it, 
I am not selling warehouses daily from TikTok, but I am definitely getting business. And I uh, have started the process of like becoming the warehouse person on the internet. That's like, it, that you know, instead of my town, now it's the internet. And I don't see myself as anywhere near there. Like, I think it's a life journey. And, but I like sharing my story online. So just could keep doing it. I, lo I love that answer. You definitely saw like a latent indicator that, you know, there is value in the platform and posting, but that's not your end game, right? I think a lot of people, the reason I asked that question, a lot of people are chasing, I need the followers. I need the views. I need it to turn into actual business. And they're doing it for the wrong reasons where you're genuinely doing it for the audience, zero expectation of return. And that's when the return actually comes. And it can come in form of building side businesses. It can come in forms of things that you never thought were possible but you're truly authentic and you're really doing it for the right reasons. So that's why I brought you on the podcast. I saw that when we talked to the Surrey and crew, right? Well, the thing is, is like as a consumer, right? This goes back to thinking like the consumer instead of thinking about your best interests yep. as a consumer, the type of content you want to consume is going to be beneficial for you. Right? So, why would I put out content that's not going to be beneficial for people watching it? They're not going to follow me. They're not going to want to watch it. So instead of making content that's good for me, I make content that's good for you. And then you, as a result, will want to follow me. And I do that through value add content, right? The content that I put out is valuable to you because I'm talking about a leasing strategy, how to negotiate your rent with your landlord. You could probably show somebody that tip and it would apply to them. Mm -hmm. The whole strategy is value add content. The other strategy is entertainment content. I'm just not that entertaining. So I go for the value. I add. disagree. The Kim Kardashian <laughs> post you did would say otherwise. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I, Hey, I can't, that, that was a good one. <laughs> okay, an audience watching, you're going to have to go to her TikTok to actually see that post. I want to value your time. I'm going to ask you a couple rapid fire questions, get you out of here. I'm going to get you in for that investment mastermind down the road. I'll introduce okay. you to some awesome people. Definitely appreciate you taking the time and doing the extra shoot for me. I'm up to this rapid fire though. Let's do this. Up to this point in your career and life, what is the greatest lesson you've learned? Um, oh, the greatest lesson is always do the right thing. I love that answer very, very much. And somebody like you that probably has a good idea of what that, you know, 80, 20 rule is, or your 80% skill set that you're a black belt at 20% of your brain is probably learning something. What are you learning right now? Right now I am learning podcasting. I'm learning about podcasting. I'm learning about the TikTok, or I'm sorry. I'm, I'm learning about the YouTube algorithm. I'm learning about um, how to make a converting website. I love that. And if you need somebody to help you syndicate your podcast, I have an amazing guy. He's ultra affordable and I'll make that connection too. Let's go. Thank you. Yeah, I got you. Um, number three, how has failure shaped your life? Failure is the cornerstone to all my successes because you can't have success without failure. So failure is how you learn. Failure is how you refine. Failure is how you get better and you cannot be successful without failure because it's just part of the build. It's part of building a foundation. Like I couldn't come on here and just start talking about commercial real estate. If I literally didn't know anything about it, I had to build the foundation before I could talk to people about it. And that okay. applies to anything. Yeah, no, that's true. And you, you definitely couldn't come on this podcast if it wasn't for Henry. So shout out to <laughs> Henry out there. Last but not least for you making the time for my audience, how can I add value to you? Where would you like me to point them? Would you like to just, leave a message for everybody. My platform is yours. That's very, very nice of you. Um, my name's Aviva. If you want to follow me on TikTok, uh, my handle is real estate source. If you want to reach out to me directly, my email is Aviva, A-V-I-V-A at warehousehotline.com. And I hope to hear from you. And I really appreciate you having me. No, you're the bomb. Like I said, I like real people. I am not for sale. Nobody can buy their way on this show and everybody go follow her, tap her in, thank her. And if you learn something, jump in the comments, let us know who you are, where you're from, hit that subscription, that notification button. And if you want to hear the audio replay, we are syndicated on all podcasting platforms. Just search the prime people podcast. 
Aviva. And like I said, go follow her TikToks and let us know what you think about that Kim Kardashian post. See you on the next one. Thanks, Aviva. Thank you so much.